Hey guys, Wolfie here, and this is another video for the channel. The usual disclaimer applies. Any opinion here is mine and mine alone. So this might be a bit of a longer one, <clears throat> so bear with me. So with this particular topic, I'm going to go into the whole Elon Musk Twitter purchase situation. So I do have a couple of articles that could bring certain light into the matter. And go into my opinion on this whole he said, she said on the whole su subject. So we do know that it was recently disclosed that Elon Musk, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing his name, I'm not the world's best at pronouncing names, so forgive me. Elon Musk had purchased a stake in Twitter for 9.2%. Now it was revealed later on that he made the purchase for about 44 billion United States dollars. So this is within the month of April and sets up this us, the public, knowing about this. Now, some people are saying it's a done deal, nothing can be done about it. However, you're looking at a few government groups that could have the final say, and it couldn't, and this could, quote unquote, void the purchase. Not so much the Twitter sake, but the purchase. Now, what on earth is all that about, Wolfie? Now, I'm going to try to explain certain things as to the best of my knowledge, although I'm not a legal expert by any means. Now, some people are saying, you know, it's a done deal. However, there are some people bringing it to light that this is not a done deal because there are, again, three government groups that could have the final say. One of them being the SEC, another being the Department of Justice, and the third being the Federal Trade Commission themselves. Now, some people might be familiar with the FTC and the Department of Justice because the Federal Trade Commission, they were one of the players who prevented NVIDIA from acquiring ARM, ARM being a United Kingdom-based chip designer, and that deal was supposed to have been around $40 billion United States dollars. That's 4 zero. And the Department of Justice, they're being called upon by the CDC to appeal a recent ruling on mask mandates on public transportation, which according to an article by the NPR, the judge who made that ruling misunderstood public health law. And the judge was appointed by the former administration and this particular judge, according to some sources, he had no real, like, experience, you know, trying cases that, as a judge, that sort of thing. And the judge was confirmed, you know, when the Republicans had the majority in the Senate to do so. So that's a bit of a background story on the Department of Justice, as well as the Federal Trade Commission. So, we're going to go into a couple of articles on Elon Musk and Tesla Tesla, I'll explain this a little bit, in a, in a little bit, so to speak. Now, the SEC, Federal Trade Commission, and the Department of Justice, if they really want to, they can get themselves involved. So, I'm going to go into a couple of key articles that could put a stop to this or set severe conditions. So, stay tuned. Article number one, this is from, from the NPR again. They're the ones who also mentioned the whole thing with the judge who ruled on the mask mandates recently, the, the same judge, you know, who misunderstood public health law. NPR mentions this particular lawsuit, and this particular lawsuit is from earlier this year, more specifically early mid-February. Now, the state of California is suing a Tesla location for what you see here. Now, the reason why I bring this up is that people mention on Twitter even more recently that Tesla is a bit of a reflection on Elon's ideologies. Now, some people, other, some other people on Twitter, those who do digital art, have been mentioning along the lines of Elon not really liking the art he sees on Twitter, which could be a bit concerning. Because digital art, you know, it's art. Just like a painting you actually buy at an art gallery or a vinyl of music from a live show. Those are ex other examples of art. 
So with that, it could be a bit concerning, you know, because you have to think about ideologies being reflective of the person who owns that company. Now, some people were mentioning about how Elon Musk, you know, got his fortune through somewhat questionable means. And that part is going to be a separate video if I feel like filming it. Because that's not the gist of this particular video. But for this, you know, for this lawsuit to come to show light, it may not be a good thing for Twitter in the sense of, like, you got somebody, like, who's reflective of certain types of ideologies that might not be good. And this is a bit of a nutshell. So I'm going to have a link to this particular article in the description below, so that way you guys can see this on your own time. I really didn't hear much about this until we've heard of the Twitter purchase outright. Article number two. Now, this particular one is of earlier this month. Now, according to this, it looks like Elon Musk is getting sued by shareholders over a delay in disclosing Twitter stake. Now, this, it, if it really does turn out to be true, this is an actual violation of a specific United States securities law. Now, this article does bring into light the exact law. So, we're going to jump right into this. Let's see if I can find the actual information. Now, here we go. This is the part in the article that is worth noting. U.S. securities law requires investors to disclose within 10 days that they have acquired at least 5% of the company, which in Musk's case would have been the 24th of March. Now, we didn't <clears throat> know about this until the 5th of April. Now, you have to think of yourself, and that, let me, let me try to rephrase this. You have to think of yourself, you're thinking the 24th of March, and then we find out more information on the 5th of April. So we're going to do a bit of simple math. So from the 24th through the 31st of March, that's seven days. You have April, the 1st of April, 2nd of April, and the 3rd of April. There, that would That is 10. Now, we didn't hear about this for 12 days. So because of this particular law... That means that Elon Musk broke the law. And this is, again, a U.S. securities law for investors. Now, this could get the attention of the Department of Justice because of this particular violation. Now, would, so that's that. Now, here, you, you find out here a little bit later on that Twitter announced on the 5th of April that Musk would join his board of directors, but this week he had decided not to. So we do know he's not on the board of directors. Now, by not joining, so he can <clears throat> keep buying shares, that sort of thing, without his, so that sort of thing. So he's limited to 14.9% of the state. So this is pretty much the information right here. This is the, uh, the case number. Rosella versus Musk, U.S. District Court, Southern District of New York, and the uh, number right you see right here, 22-03026. So this is pretty much what you're going to be seeing in federal courts. Because, again, due to the potential violation of U.S. security law, meaning that investors had to disclose within 10 days of a stock purchase that is at least 5%, which we do know it's about 9.2. So, this may, again, like I said, and this could also get the attention of the SEC due to a practice known as pump and dump, and I'll be back in a moment with that. I am back, so you're actually going to see me type in the actual, um, like, the, the phrase. So, we're going to go into pump... And dump. Uh, see, so 
stock definition. So this is where... Okay, so in so this is what people are suggesting that this is where the SEC could get involved. It's this is pretty much right here. So it's pumping up the price of the stock and then dump the shares by selling their own shares at the inflated right price. So this could be this could get interesting if we see this in this particular case with Twitter. Now I am really torn about this, you know, with him buying Twitter. But like I said, I it is some people are saying that this is not as much of a done deal as people think because you can get the SEC, which is stock exchange people, you have the Department of Justice, you also have the Federal Trade Commission. And if those three, any of those three or all of those three get involved. They can have an interesting situation. And by the interesting situation, they could say that you can have the company, but we have these conditions that you must abide by in order to prevent further incident from happening. And it could be something that Elon might not agree to and sell the company like that. And... The reason why I say that is because, again, you have you look at the Federal Trade Commission. They were one of four players that prevented NVIDIA from acquiring ARM. Now, the acquisition, had it been successful, would have been approximately $40 billion United States dollars. And the fears from that acquisition would have been like, people would have been forced to seek elsewhere for chip designs, and you're talking other industries, not just computers. One of them being automotive, another being in healthcare. And those two being, in some ways, far more important than tech. Because when it comes to automotive and healthcare, you're talking about two industries where people are very heavily reliant to make sure people are healthy, people are happy, and people can get to and from work regardless of the reason of like the such, whether it be they're going to their work in healthcare or their work in shipping logistics or other frontline work. And by frontline work, frontline essential work. So, I mean, I'm one of those people, I'm, I'm just going to be, I'm cautious neutral to this whole thing in my personal opinion. And the reason why I'm cautiously neutral is because some of the stuff I've been hearing about Elon, I'm like, I, I have to be very, I just like, I have to be very careful, so to speak. Because certain things with Tesla, you know, is reflective of him by some. And it's something I'm like, I have to, you know, absorb and, you know, do real and additional research before I come up to any conclusion on that. Now, with this lawsuit against him over the delay of um, the delay of disclosure for for that Twitter stock he bought for nine point two percent, and then buying Twitter outright, it's like, and that's where I'm like, I have to you know keep myself on guard for the simple reasons that. If you're buying a percentage of the company's stakes, like stock, and then buying the company outright, it's like, is it really pump and dump? And if that does turn out to be the case, this could get the SEC's attention pretty fast. And that delay in disclosure, you know, it being brought to a federal court, that could get the, the attention of the Department of Justice pretty darn fast but time will only tell and because of the factor of time I'm actually going to reserve my opinion on the whole purchase until we know more of you know the new terms of service if this deal really does go through that sort of thing because rushing into a judgment about this, 
doesn't really help me as much. And I want to make sure I make the right decision, you know, and sets up my thoughts when more information comes to light. Now, again, people are like, we're happy about this. Some people are actually torn about it. But with the whole issue of the Tesla lawsuit, as well as the Elon Musk lawsuit, which are two completely different lawsuits, one for racial discrimination, the other for a delayed disclosure of, twi of the Twitter stock purchase, which could be seen as a pump and dump, as well as a violation of a U.S. security law tied to that you have to disclose of a stock purchase of at least 5% within 10 days of the purchase. So... It is what it is. That's all I really have to say. But like I say, it's not as much of a done deal as people think. And that's where I truly stand on this. Because you have the three governing bodies that could have the final say if they want. One being the SEC, another being the DOJ, Department of Justice, and the third being the Federal Trade Commission or the FTC. So... On that note, I am done with this video. With Wolfie here signing off, I will catch you all on the flip side.